Um, Dara had a bit of a um, was assaulted last night. Uh, nothing to do with the um, with with the politics of what we're doing. It was just a random assault in the street. But um, uh, so Dara's very hurt and uh, injured. But he show, wants to tell his story, tell the story of the yellow vests in Galway, and uh, it's important uh, what Dara has done and the 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 journey we've all come. I started out with Dara here in Liam Mellow's monument. And Dara and myself both ran in the election as independents, as Irish traditional nationalists. So um, this is uh, just a development. And uh, you know, we are in a great position because uh, we are the only people who, are, who have permission, who give ourselves permission to oppose the lockdown. Everybody else is in fear and bought and sold into the system up at Bilderberg, in on the globalism, in debt and unable to make their own decisions even if they wanted to. So uh, I'll introduce Dara and he'll tell the story of, um, of where he is at at the moment and uh, how we have come to the place we are in now. So we welcome you, Dara. We know that you've had a bad injury last night, and that you've been in hospital, uh, and that you're um, you, you've, you're on painkillers. But we very much appreciate you coming here tonight after a terrible assault, and uh, to come and tell your story. So fair play to you, Dara. Thanks, thanks. Fair play to you, David. Um, and uh, none of this would have been possible without your support through all of this. So I, I guess I should deal with my injuries first. Um, I, I've got a dislocated shoulder, a broken finger, a cracked sternum, multiple contusions, black eye apparently. I, I've got a lot of injuries and, and all of those injuries are excuses for me to be not here today. I, I, I could have found 40 different reasons to not be here today, to not stand up for our country as our heritage is being sold out. But I didn't. My friends came around me in my time of pain in my bed and I was licking my wounds. And my friends came around me and they didn't coerce me. They just they reassured me, you know, that all you guys will be here today. They reassured me that, you know, there's a lot of support here today. And I'm, I'm so happy to see so many of you guys here today. It's, it's, um, we, we are the independent people. We, we are the, independent thinkers. We think with our forebrain, you know. We're not stuck in animalistic emotional thought. And even though I have plenty of cause to, to stay at home, um, I didn't. I, I stood up, I crawled out of my bed. I, I dragged myself into the shower, screaming in pain. I washed myself, I didn't quite shave, but I, I washed myself and I got here because it's so important that we, we stand together around all different causes. Anybody who is trying to bring the plight of the Irish people into the public forum needs to be supported. You don't have to support everything they say, just support some of what they say. And be there, be a number, be a hand clapper, chant with them, okay? You know, it's, it's, we don't all have the choices to support the people we want in the local area. You know, the, the people that are um, exactly aligned with our, our worldview. But still, you should support the fellow that's 40% or 60% aligned with your worldview. So, um, so that's the first part. I, I, I wanted to talk about uh, me and the yellow vest. And it started here 18 or 20 months ago when a certain drug dealing, wife beating, people before a profit candidate was trying to use the LFS movement to have a riot in Galway City. Um, these people here are very dear to me. Um, I, I, I know this town from 20, 30 years ago when I was very young. I know the business owners, there's far fewer, far fewer of them around now than there was years ago. But I still know the families that own the businesses around this town and they're very dear to me. And it's because of the support that my family got from those businesses. 
my family would have starved without these people, you know. My dad was self-employed and he needed the support of his community and he got it. And today when I look at it and I see the likes of BLM or Antifa deciding that we need to riot and destroy property and break windows and set fires, this just really, you know, it, it's not these people's fault. It's the system that they're in. They, they have no choice. They, they're entrepreneurs. And they're, they're the people that employ us. They're the people that give us jobs. If there's no millionaires and billionaires, then none of us have jobs. We're all working for the government. So you can't own a property here without being a millionaire. So, you know, I, I'm very grateful to the, the business owners around Galway for the support, not just that they've shown me, but that they've shown our community. And I'd say to them, if they're listening, that they need to stand up. They need to, they need, it's, not, it's not good enough to have us doing your dirty work for you and you hoping that everything is going to be all right and it's all going to go back to normal. You actually have to come out and show the government that it's, it's part of your life, your business is you. And you have to come out and show the government that you're not willing to give it up so easily. Every solution that they have proposed so far is a restriction of personal freedom. Uh, be it a face mask or be it isolation or be it lockdown or, you know, everything. There was no talk about vitamins or there was no talk about exercise or sunshine, the wonderful effects of sunshine on a virus. None of that. It was all personal freedoms being restricted all the time. So I, I'm, I'm looking at that going, there's, there's something very wrong there, you know. Why, why aren't our, our ministers telling us about normal, beneficial health, you know? Instead, they're talking about restricting personal freedom. So I, I started this protest um, 18 or 20 months ago, right here. I think we had 40 or 60 people in a crowd, not dissimilar to this. And we, we walked up to the county buildings and we went to the city hall. And we, went around by, we went around by the banks and we went down Shop Street. And it was a powerful experience. And I have to say that the Gardaí at the time, they were very accommodating. We're not violent. We're not trying to break property. We're not, we're not trying to set fires. And they could see it. They could see that we just needed a voice, that we just wanted to speak, that we just wanted to gather together with people who share our values. And it's not fair to call them supportive because that would prejudice their job, but they gave us the space to do that. They, they stopped traffic, they wouldn't let people be beeping at us and getting irate with us, they'd just go away, you know. They, they, it wasn't that they necessarily supported us, but they provided us the place in which to demonstrate, demonstrate our love for Ireland, demonstrate our love for our heritage. And it is, that's their job. That's what they're supposed to do. So when I, when I start, it went on for quite a while. Um, it, the numbers started to, to dwindle. And I ended up standing here on my own every Saturday for a year. And the reason I'd done it was to keep people before profit and Sinn Féin from taking this position, from holding this position. They wanted to use the yellow vest flag to have riots in my city. And I could not let that happen. And the only way to not let that happen was to be here every Saturday. So over all that 18 months, you know, I, I, wind, rain, it didn't matter. I was here every Saturday. And I, I, I think I stopped that drug addict, wife beaten people before profit candidate taking over. I'm pretty sure I did, and uh, I don't know where he is now, but actually I do, he's up in Tuishka, but I don't know. Laughing is the worst when you've got broken ribs. Uh, but, um, so last week, uh, a friend of mine sent me a photograph, and he, I mean, this guy is, he's a lifelong friend, he's a great supporter, we don't agree on everything, but we still enjoy each other's conversation. And we debate, and we argue, and he's got a new wife, and he's got a new family, and it's, it's just, you know, he's just a wonderful human being. And he sent me a photograph from 
the LFS website where it started at the top of the photo. I have it here on my phone. Any of you are welcome to look at it. It started with the LFS Ireland is registered at, and it, I think it was 44 to 49 Parnell Street. And when he sent it to me, I said, oh, well, 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 they have to be registered somewhere. And he said to me, yeah, but that's Sinn Féin HQ. And my, my response was, wow, you know. And I, I had to take some time. I, I didn't respond immediately after that. I, it, it took me some time to figure out my position. I, I always felt like the LFS were disgruntled uh, Sinn Féiners that had found a new path and were, were trying to bring the centre together. But when I, when I saw that, it felt like there was something else going on in the background that I didn't know about. I'm disconnected from Dublin and Wexford and I'm disconnected from the, the main committee on the LFS. But I still held this ground for 18 months and didn't let uh, people before profit take over. So um, 